In the first part, we covered I squares to sample the microphone in real time. In the second part, we covered SDIO and the FATFS to store data within the SD card. Next, we have to integrate them to stream audio to the SD card. Let me provide a general view of what we're going to accomplish. The user presses the button and we start recording. Then, whenever audio data is available, we will stream data to the SD card, specifically to the file we created. When the user presses the button again, we stop recording. So let's jump into coding. So I open the source file and uh, define three functions for start recording, writing to the WAV file and stop recording. When we start recording, we also define the frequency of the audio data. And when writing to the file, we have two arguments. First, pointer to the array and the, the array size. So this array will be written to the SD card. And also we don't need to create any TXT file. So I'm going to remove all these lines when initializing the SD card. This thing also we don't need this. And next step, of course, we need to declare these three functions within the header file. Next, as we discussed, we need to integrate a button for our system to trigger the recording to stop the recording. So I will open IUC file and on my board I have a button connected to this uh, pin PA0. And by default, this pin is already connected as external interrupt line 0 and if I open GPIO we have this PA0 and this external interrupt is triggered in rising edge and also if I open extra NVIC uh, this external interrupt line 0 is already enabled. So in your case, the configuration of the button might be slightly different, but you can refer to my another video where I show how to set up external interrupt in detail. Then I open main.c and define this callback function. So this function is invoked whenever the button is pressed. And also we have this if statement just to check that the button is pressed, not another pin. So in my case, I have GPIO A pin 0. And within this if statement, I set the value of this variable. We're going to use this variable within the while loop. So this is kind of flag. And of course, we need to define this variable. And in addition, we have uh, this variable just to distinguish between start and stop recording because we're using the same button for both actions. And also, we need to use a volatile keyboard for this variable. And within the while loop, we have this code so when, whenever the button is pressed, we enter um, to, to the body of this if statement. Then we have this if else statement um, to distinguish start recording and stop recording. So every time when we press the button, we just switch between this if and else statement. And of course, we need to reset this variable at the end. So initial value of uh, start stop recording variable is zero. So within this else statement, we need to start recording. So I will open this source file and I copy this line and I insert it within this else statement. And for frequency, we have this sampling frequency. I will explain later why we need this argument. Then we have this stop recording. I will insert it here. 
And at this point, it's a good idea to check the button, the logic of this code. So I'm going to print some message. And right now I don't care about SD card, so I will just comment this line. So everything pretty fine, so we can debug the code. Then I open the data console, I resume the code, and when I press the button, I have this message, start recording. When I press, press again, we have start recording. If I press again, we have start recording, stop recording. So we kind of alternating between start and stop recording. So this means that the logic of this code works. So the next step is to write the body of these three functions. Eventually, we start implementing the functions. First, we need to update the start recording function. Within this function, we create a file to store audio data. And we cannot use the text document anymore. Instead of it, we will employ a WAV file to store audio data. The text document has a straightforward format. We can check it by opening a text document with a hex editor to see the file's actual data. The computer keeps the ASCII values of characters. But if we open a WAV file with the hex editor, we will notice that things are not as straightforward as in the text document. So let's talk about the WAV file format. First, we have a 44 byte WAV file header to define the audio data format. It has a particular structure and we need to comply with it. This file header specifies the sampling weight, resolution, data size, the number of channels, etc. Then we have audio data, two bytes per sample in our case first channel, then the second, then again first, and so on. Finally, let's implement this start recording function. First, we need an array to keep WAV file header, so we have 44 bytes. And you can refer to these comments just to understand the meaning of each byte. Then within start recording, we need to update some elements of the array, because we have a frequency as an input, as an argument. So between 24 and 27, I update elements. So I use right shift bitwise operation to extract all bytes of this frequency value. Also byte rate depends on the frequency. So we need to update these elements as well. And the byte rate is equal to sampling rate times bytes per sample times number of channels. And we have two number of channels, two bytes per sample. So we, we just need to multiply sampling rate by four to get byte rate. So that's what I am doing here. And I update these elements. Next, we need to define the name of the file. So by default, we will have this name. And every time we need to update the file name, Otherwise, we're going to overwrite the file, so we will lose data. That's why I define this static variable. So uh, based on the value of this variable, we're going to update this file name. So we have these lines just to extract digits of this uh, variable. So at the beginning, we have 000, 001, 002, and so on. And I use a remainder operation to extract digits. I also add 48 because in the ASCII table, 48 is digit 0. Then we have digit 1 and so on. That's why we need to add this bias. And also, of course, we need to increment this file counter. Finally, we just create file using this function and we have if else statements just to check that everything is fine. And we had before test file, I'm going to use name WAV file just to avoid misunderstandings. In addition, there are two pieces of information we need to update 
within the WAV file header, which is the size of the file in bytes and size of the actual audio data. And in the beginning, we don't know the size of the file because we don't know when user presses the button. That's why I'm going to define this variable WAV file size and we initialize its value to zero within and start recording. The next step is implementing this write to WAV file function. Here I convey audio data to the WAV file we create within start recording function. Also we need to add this data size to this variable just to keep track the, the file size. We need this information later. Also we need to send WAV file header in the beginning. So if we running this function first time after creating the file, I replace 44 bytes of audio data with WAV file header. That's really important. So I need to define this variable as well. And we have come to the exciting point where we integrate i squares and the SD card. A question for a million is where to use this write to WAV file function. The naive answer is to convey this data i squares array when this callback function is fired. However, this approach doesn't work. The may will continue filling data to this array from the beginning, and while we transfer data to the SD card, the may will overwrite samples. Instead, we need to use an additional callback function fired when half of the buffer is full. In that way, we can avoid the problem of losing audio data. So we send the half of the array, which is just filled, and the may will continue filling another half. So finally, I define this callback function, which notifies us that the half of the buffer is full. And again, I use two flags just to use this information within, within the while loop. And again, we need to define these variables. Then instead of having just 100 samples within this array, let's increase this value. So I will define the header file and I will define this macro. And of course, we're gonna use this macro here. So we will have 42,048 samples within this array. Then inside of the while loop, I'm going to insert this if statement. So when half of the buffer is full, I transfer this data to the WAV file. And when another half of the buffer is full, I also send uh, this data uh, and pay attention that we need to add this bias just to get the right half uh, of the buffer, uh, the upper half of the buffer. And we also start the May when we start recording. That's why I cut this line and paste it within this else statement. And it is really important to start the May after calling start recording function. Also, we stop the May when we stop recording, which is, I think, quite obvious. Also, there's a one uh, simple uh, stupid mistake that I made. I forgot to insert void keyword. We almost done. The final thing to do is to implement the stop recording function. And here we need to modify the WAV file header because we need to update the size of the file in bytes and size of the audio data. And here I'm going to use um, this variable which holds the size of the file. So I insert these lines. And the first thing to do is to subtract eight from this variable because these uh, first bytes are not considered as a part of the file. And to get the audio data size, I need to subtract 36 because we have 36 bytes of WAV file header. Then we have audio data. And, and also the WAV file header is located on top of the file. 
that's why we need to move uh, the pointer to, to the beginning of the file. That's why I call this function. So the second argument is zero, which means that we're moving to the stop of the file. Then we call this f write function to send this WAV file header. And we close the file, we clear this flag, then we print this message. Finally, we can debug the code, but uh, I just forget to uncomment this line where we initialize the SD card. Then we can press debug. Then I resume the code. So we're getting this message. Then I press the button. So we're getting this W letter because uh, Every time when we call this function, write to a file, I, I'm just printing this message, just letter W. So it means that we are streaming um, audio data to the, to the SD card. Then when I press the button again, we close the file. So we stop recording. And let's um, run this code again. So again, we have a double letter, so which means that we have the second file. So we are streaming to the next file. Then I, I stop recording, I press the button again. So it means that everything is working pretty good. Finally, I just want to show the result. So I press the button. I will play some music. Then I stop recording. Then I insert the SD card to the computer and open the file with Audacity and let's play the sound. I will play some music. And if I open the spectrogram we see that the sound is pretty clear, we don't have any packet loss or any other problem. Finally we built our audio recording device using the microcontroller. Please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to visit my website if you want to learn programming the microcontroller systematically.